Thanks for joining us. I'm Randall Bennett, taking a bit of a break for the vacation week and talking about a few different topics. Today we're going to talk WiMAX, and to do that we bring in Jason Heiner who runs Tech Republic. He's the editor-in-chief over there. Jason, thanks for being with us. Sure, glad to be here. So WiMAX is one of those new buzzwords that people keep talking about. It essentially, you know, when I think of it, it's kind of like the next generation of wireless technology. What exactly is WiMAX, and can you kind of break down for people who might not totally understand the concept, like what's kind of the different flavors of WiMAX and kind of give us the brief overview. Yeah, so WiMAX, uh, you know, a lot of hype, a lot of this kind of driven by Intel. Intel's been uh, an early proponent uh, of WiMAX and it's really been one of the organizing uh, pieces around that and that because why because Intel knows that that their chips are uh, are sold in much more uh, much larger quantities in places where there's connectivity right so their motivation is to get um, broadband internet uh, spread as widely as they can to buy more chips so uh, what the the WiMAX is is a is mobile WiMAX is really the one that we think of when we talk about WiMAX because that's the one that allows you to have the internet on the go everywhere and that has a, a standard called 802.16e that's that's mobile WiMAX now yeah. some some people you'll see when you start talking about WiMAX people will raise their hand and say hey we've got WiMAX you know in my city and and uh, I don't know what the big deal is and I don't understand you know but I can't yeah. uh, get it because it seems like it's just for businesses and and what it is 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 there's an older standard of WiMAX called 802.16D, and that's fixed WiMAX, and it's just a replacement for your cable modem. Or businesses use it for uh, for for their kind of uh, internet when they can't get a good connection in in a in a spot or uh, that kind of thing. So, so really, all yeah, this go is ahead. kind of like buzzword soup. Like there's these different I standards, know. but basically the thing that people should really pay attention to is mobile WiMAX, and that's the thing that ro that like Sprint and the uh, folks like the Zome and you know, Clearwire folks, Clearwire. all those people are rolling out in places like Baltimore. So that's kind of like, you know, it's a replacement for 3G data where you can have access like on your phone or your laptop. So mobile WiMAX is the thing we should care about. So what's it is. Uh, wh mobile WiMAX being the next generation of wireless data, how fast of speeds can people expect from this new upcoming standard? Yeah, so in the real world, you know, you're talking to speeds of about um, two to three megabits per second, um, decent. You know, you're going to see higher than that a, a little bit. You know, I, I, I've tested the one in, in Baltimore when they launched that one. You know, I was getting uh, between two and five, uh, but you got to remember that there weren't a ton of people on it yet yeah. at, th at that point. Um, so, and, and even upload speeds, you know, up to about uh, a meg, um, maybe two if you're if you're really cooking. But so, so uh, like yeah, it's like about. I mean, these you know, right now you can see EVDO speeds of about 600 to 700 kilobits per second. So it's it's like an incremental jump. It's not you know the huge jump that everyone's kind of hoping. But it's it's you know, is, are there any other advantages over raw speed improvements? Yeah, there there is a quality improvement. I mean, it feels much more like a regular internet connection. Uh, you know, the the thing about 3G is. It just is not as reliable a connection. Um, it, it's forcing a, uh, a a network that's made and built for voice and trying to shove data down it, I mean, and so it has those limitations. You know, WiMAX uh, is built for data, yeah. and it, but now you can use voice over it, but it's a VoIP. You know, kind yeah. of like what yeah. what we're doing now over Skype. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can you can handle voice, but it handles voice just as a as a packet. Yeah. Uh, the, w the way you do with VoIP. So with this technology, WiMAX is kind of deployed, like we said, it's in Baltimore already. They have other scheduled deployments coming over this next year, as well as into 2010. There's another standard on the block, though, that's ready to confuse more people, and that's called LTE. Now, you know, LTE, long-term evolution, is what it stands for, and companies like Verizon are going to be adopting this for their cell networks uh, as kind of a replacement. It's based on the GSM technology that's been around for you know years, decades probably now. Uh, so what's LTE, and you know, compared to WiMAX, are there disadvantages and advantages for both standards? And they're, I'm, I mean, inherently they're not very interoperable, though, right? These are kind of one or the other. Yes, they're not interoperable, um, but they really are going to be. I, I think you're going to see both coexist. Uh, 
over the next 10 years. And what's going to happen is, you know, LTE, and, and they are kind of cousins. Some of the underlying technologies that make, up, that, that make the, the data happen is the same for, for the two. So they are kind of cousins. But the WiMAX, the, really the biggest difference is kind of business model here. You know, WiMAX has been built from the ground up to be sort of the open Internet, uh, the way the Internet is now, on uh, over cell towers, uh, essentially. You know, LTE is an evolution of the current cellular network. So the business model is more going to be, you know, carrier driven, carrier specific, tied to carriers uh, and, and build through carriers so, with the kind of 3G model. So the, the speeds and everything are about the same. Business model is really the difference. Okay. So, so, you know, let's expand that out a little bit more. So, WiMAX, you know, I can expect to buy a card from someone, just, you know, vendor X, like a random company, and I could probably use that on any WiMAX network as long as I, you know, I'm friends with them and set up, you know, an agreement or whatever. But you're saying with LTE, you're expecting more like buying a network card from a carrier like AT&T, or I guess in this case, let's talk Verizon since they're the ones doing it. So you yes. buy a network card from Verizon and you, you'll only be able to use that with Verizon and you kind of be locked into that situation. Is that kind of the difference or am I Well, right? yeah, so you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna use it like you use, your, for LTE, you're gonna use it like you use a 3G card now. It's gonna be able to roam, and both AT&T and uh, Verizon are working on this. So you're gonna be very much in that cellular model. Yeah. With WiMAX, you're gonna be more in kind of the ISP model. And, and, and remember now, WiMAX has partnerships with Google and Comcast and Time Warner Cable. So it's very likely that you're gonna see some partnerships where you know if you have Comcast or Time Warner or whoever for your cable, that you may have this joint deal where, okay, I'm going to get um, this higher level broadband package that where I get my home internet and I get um, WiMAX, glo you know, this roaming um, internet that's sort of nationwide and, you know, eventually international uh, as well. Or, you know, the way they're doing it in Portland and, um, and Baltimore right now is you can buy WiMAX, you get a home router and, and that's your internet connection at home and you have a, a, a chip built into your laptop like many of them have now yeah. um, embedded or a, a dongle and then you use that also when you roam so you have one internet uh, there if you're if you're WiMAX so, so that's kind of the difference. So the last thing I want to ask you, um, you know, this is obviously a really complex thing that people have been talking about for I think about five years now it's kind of been in the pipeline so WiMAX is deployed LTE is scheduled for 2013 when are consumers really going to be you know using this in the mainstream, do you think this is something that we're going to see towards, you know, the teens and into the early 2020 era, or do you think this is something that could roll out even sooner within the next, you know, five years? Yeah, we're going to see it more in the next two years. I say 20, 20, 2009, 2010, 2011. This is going to accelerate pretty significantly. Uh, Clearwire, the, the primary mobile uh, WiMAX provider in the U.S., uh, they've got it in the two cities that I mentioned. They're also deploying it in uh, more cities, you know, six more cities, actually eight more cities, I'm sorry, before the end of this year, more mid-tier cities. Um, and then in 2010, they're going to about 50 more cities, leading with Chicago, uh, New York, D.C., San Francisco, Boston. So they're going with all the big cities yeah. next year. Now, LTE, from, from that angle, Verizon, um, everything that I'm hearing right now is Verizon is hell-bent to get this out because they know that they're going to be coming under pressure from WiMAX uh, in, in the market. And so they're expecting to do kind of what um, WiMAX did last year with the two uh, cities that it lit up. Uh, it's going to go hope, supposedly by the end of this year, even with a couple test cities, and then maybe go to, you know, 10 or 15 cities more uh, next year. Now that's their current plan. Building these networks is tough. Yeah. Verizon's probably the best network builder out there, so um, you know I trust their um, timeline a little more than others. You know, WiMAX when it originally got pushed out, it was about two years behind schedule. Yeah. Um, so we don't know, but I think by next year. Um, we're going to see both of these things in action, and consumers are going to start using them uh, pretty uh, significantly, and we'll have some more information. Well, it'll be interesting to see. Jason, thanks for joining us again. It's techrepublic.com. Jason writes a Tech Sanity Check, a bunch of different uh, publications there. So you can find out about WiMAX, or you guys mainly do business stuff, right? You're, you're kind of 
handle like the business side of things? That we do. Of- we're we're um you know mainly for for IT professionals. Uh, so it's mainly an online trade publication and community for for trade um for uh, you know IT professionals. But we do basically business technology and all these technologies, how they relate to business and what are the business uses for them. Awesome, Jason. Well, thanks for being with us. Um, of course, you can get links to all this stuff over at techbee.com where we have the full write up. And we'll also have links to a bunch of Jason's. Jason's written about this so many times, so we'll have links to all of his posts. So if you want to find out more about WiMAX and what to expect, we'll have all that info there. Tomorrow on the show, we're actually going to be talking with Intel about WiMAX and seeing you know, what they think of this upcoming, uh, you know, how they want to play this. So we'll talk to them. Uh, that is it for today's show. I'm Randall Bennett, and we'll see you next time. Later.